Hey there, if you don't know me, my name is Maria and I like to make technology videos on the internet. So in today's video, we're going into part two of how I applied to 40-ish different software engineering internships over the past few months. And I did take videos of like what I was doing during that time and like how I was studying and different things like that. So you'll see that in this video, but also I was very lazy and tired. So anytime you see me wearing this outfit, it's just gonna be me explaining what happened and let's get right into it. So I think we should first start off with the interviews that I was going to have at the beginning of January. And those were with MLH for their MLH fellowship for writing open source code, then with Bell at a hackathon for a speed interview, and then with MongoDB. So what happened with MLH was that I just presented a project that I had built before, like in the past, and it just was like a short 15 minute meeting with someone. But my interviewer was skilled in JavaScript and I was showing him a project in Ruby on Rails or like mostly Ruby on Rails and a bit of like trashy React because that was like when I was first learning React. So that wasn't really aligned. They, I eventually like they did tell me, oh yeah, like we like you, but we can't find a spot for you, I guess during this summer so i was like whatever and then they said do you want us to keep you on the list and i was like yeah sure like in the future i'd like to be in it or i can just contribute to open source on my own no big deal whatever i had my bell interview was just like 25 minutes ish of me answering behavioral questions that didn't lead to anywhere who cares whatever that was just random and it's good to practice behavioral questions you know i was supposed to have an interview with mongodb or like the first round like behavioral as well and then they're like oh yeah by the way we're gonna cancel this because we already filled up the spots because i guess they have rolling admission or whatever it's called they just take people more quickly and i guess they filled up all their spots so what you're gonna do i did apply late <laughs> so now let's pretend that it's january 2021 and maria is starting to study for her twitch on-site interviews so this is where i started getting pretty serious and actually looking at cracking the coding interview i even used my whiteboard for the first time in literal months and yeah i i didn't even check off the things i would just erase them i don't know why i drew check boxes and i also reviewed some of my notes from facebook abcs because i had done that like a few months ago during the fall semester so that was really helpful and that's what kind of got me to become better at interviewing and i also took notes from a bunch of other places about like graphs and things like that because i was weaker on those subjects so yeah i had a lot of stuff to prepare from and a lot of notes and i also obviously prepared for, for twitch by looking at their values during this time i also got an email from figma telling me that i could complete a biteboard assessment and that was really fun and it was two parts like the technical reasoning and also coding and you know how some people do anime Doro? Well, that's literally me and my life, but I just binge anime so much and then do work in between doing that. And I really have to hand it to Haikyuu because it was probably what made me successful in my interviews because their passion and just like the whole, I don't know, the whole show was just so amazing and it made me just believe in myself more and it hyped me up so much for my interviews. I'm not lying. It's so good. You have to watch it if you haven't. my first first twitch interview for the on-site because i have three in a row and it's crazy well i have a two-hour break now so we had like a greeting from the recruiter who was always talking to me so he said like good luck try your best and if i have any questions and then the guy joined and he's like on the membership team and he was uh first asking me about myself because he didn't have my resume for some reason and he asked me about that and he told me about himself and he worked at a lot of startups before working at Twitch, so he really likes the, or he liked the free food and all that stuff. And then he, he was basically, he was in charge of asking me behavioral questions at the beginning about all the projects I worked on and explain what I did and how I built it, or like how did I learn this specific thing. And then yeah, I told him about like my recent hackathon project and also when I tried working at the startup, because he also worked at startups, so that was cool. And then he asked me this question, like a, it was data structures and architecture type question. Whereas like, okay, here's like a feature on Twitch. How would you actually design it? So like, how would it go from the front end to making an API request and possibly using caching or database? And then what would be like the method to like do the feature? 
So it's pretty cool. I didn't really think about caching because I was like, well, let's go to the database. And he's like, well, if you make a lot of requests, then like how everyone does on Twitch, like there's so many requests happening at once. So it's like, it wouldn't be great. So you cache stuff. And then when do you recache it? So that was pretty cool to learn about that. I learned a lot from him. And like, he, whenever I would answer a question in behavioral, he would always be like, oh, this is what I think. Like, this is my point of view. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Like learning about someone else's point of view was really nice. So yeah, I'm gonna take a break and then go to my next interview. <sighs> also, I forgot to mention that uh, he also asked me like all these follow-up questions about like, oh, what if this thing happened? Or how do you debug this thing? How do you figure out what the problem is? So that was interesting. Like it was, that was, those are the hardest questions. Like being like, oh yeah, this is what I would do to debug this thing. Oh, I would go here and check this. Or oh, I would add this thing to like time it from this event to that event and blah, blah, blah. So that was kind of difficult or like where would you how do you like diagnose an issue basically like is it on the front end the back end api layer whatever those are hard but i got through it eventually <laughs> okay it's 6 p.m i just finished my second interview at twitch for the on-site and then i was really nice and it was a few behavioral questions like similar to the last one where they asked a lot about like oh well what kind of product do you work on here was it one time that you failed or you got some critical feedback or something and how do you deal with it those kinds of questions and then also about like oh if you were working on the twitch website what would you do if this happened or that happened so the question he gave me it was pretty interesting and like he built on top of it and we talked a lot about the different types of data structures i could use so i started with array and i explained that about like oh it's bad in this case and then tried using a dictionary and implemented that and then he's like, oh, okay, what about a different thing? And I'm like, oh, you can use a try. And then we talked about that and we're like, oh, but it'll still be pretty bad. Cause it's like, oh, what if the PM still wants it to be oh, one time complexity? And he's like, oh, it was a trip between time and space like for storing all this information. So I ended up just doing like a dictionary. It was pretty cool, like working with him and like he pushed me a lot and was trying to get me to think of all the edge cases, which I liked. Woo, finally done all my interviews for today. Oh my, I'm so tired. It's dark outside. And the last interviewer was a woman also on the memberships team. And she was so nice. And her voice is so smooth and so calming. And she was just working on it with me. And she was like, oh, let's just, we'll just learn together and try to solve the problem together. And both of us are confused because this was the only question I got that wasn't related to Twitch. It was related to something completely different. And then I had a phone call with the recruiter at the end because he said like to message him when I'm done and he's like okay like we'll talk about next steps and he'll get back to me next week to see if I get in or not we'll see but I told him that was really fun and that I'm really grateful for the opportunity and because it was him who reached out to me first so I'm really happy it was a really nice experience okay so now let's go into the juicy details about what happened with my Microsoft garage interviews so I first had my behavioral interview on January 20th and like I said in my other video that you can check out about Microsoft, I don't know which side it's on, but yeah, it was like me getting ready for the Microsoft interviews and I talked all about them and I didn't mention how the interviews went. So that's what I'm going to explain today. Basically what the garage program is, it's like they put you in a group of other students, so like a few programmers and a project manager and you try to create a product and then you try to pitch it to Microsoft. Actually, one of my interviewers, my second interviewer, he had actually done this program a few years ago. So that was really cool and he did it in Boston. But I was interviewing for the position in Vancouver in uh, Canada because I'm Canadian. And it was actually such a weird process for a Microsoft Garage internship because they made you make a 10 minute video that you would send in like about yourself, like why you chose your major and like showcasing a product that you have made. And like I said in my other Microsoft video, they did provide a lot of really nice resources like about how to prepare. And what happened on my interview day, so my on-site interviews, it was going to be three 45 minute interviews. What happened was they put us in like this pre-meeting thing on Microsoft Teams. And it was a bunch of other students who were also going to be doing their on-sites that day. And they made us re-watch that technical prep interview video and to help us calm down. And it actually did help. And it like reminded me of things that I forgot. And there are people from all over Canada, like Toronto, Montreal, Vancouver, all these different people. And they are all like introducing themselves and turning on their cameras and were dressed up. And then I didn't do any of that because I, I like kind of joined later like a minute or two late and I was like oh this is awkward so I didn't do that okay so how did my interviews actually go I don't want to be mean but I was underwhelmed by uh, Microsoft interviews kind of because they weren't that interesting like the okay there were three interviews and the first two were just 
easy questions. Like imagine like the first question in like cracking the coding interview, like a section, like you know at the end they have exercises, just imagine the first question or a super easy leak code question. And then they might, they like, they gave me like two questions per interview. And they asked me obviously behavioral questions about like working with teams and like about me and my past like internships. But I was really bad because in my second interview, they gave me a really easy binary tree question. And then I did the iterative version. And then he was like, oh, how do you do it recursively? And then I was like, okay. He asked me the time and space complexity and then I struggled. And then I got it, like I said something wrong. And then he just waited for like two minutes for me to think of the correct answer. Like I got mixed up with binary trees and then binary search trees. Then I gave him the time complexity for how it would be in a binary search tree, but not in a binary tree. Like I'm dumb. Yeah. And then the third interview. That one was the most interesting. That one where I was like, okay, this is why people work at Microsoft. Cause it was this guy and I asked him at the end of the interview, like, can you tell me about yourself? And then he's like, oh yeah, I worked at Microsoft for 17 years. And I was like, what? And he's actually a principal engineer. He has written books about Microsoft architecture. Like I looked him up, it was insane. He started working at Microsoft in 1998. And then he left in like 2000 something to work at a gaming company. And then he came back a few years ago. And then he's actually like a development manager for this other team. He's insane. And he, he basically asked me some like linked list cycle question, but he asked like such an optimization question. He, it was basically just like, uh, because I told him what algorithm I would use. And then he was like, oh, how would we minutely optimize this algorithm? And I was like, hmm, this is interesting. And we just talked about algorithms and that kind of stuff. And it was super fun because yeah, just, Talking is more interesting because he's like, oh, since you know it, I'm not going to force you to code it. And I'm like, yes, good. And then they said that we would only get our information about if we got an offer or not, like within two weeks. And then I got an email literally the day later giving me an offer. And I was like, what? <laughs> wow. They gave you like a specific amount per month and then also like a relocation fee, I guess, if you want to like move to Vancouver for the summer. So yeah, that was pretty interesting. But yeah, I also did not accept this offer. I just went for lunch and I got a message from the recruiter at Twitch and he said to call him and I called him and he said congrats I got an offer from Twitch what the heck oh my god that is insane they apparently they had a meeting on Monday and then they discussed if I should be on the team or not and they said I'm inquisitive process oriented I have a strong knowledge of their platform what <laughs> okay maybe <laughs> and, then, and then they he said that they decided to offer me an internship and i have one week to decide and they'll send me the contract by end of day today and yeah he told me what the monthly stipend is which is a lot of money and also the housing stipend apparently they give to people he said there's rolling acceptances and if i decide to join then they'll give me like homework preparation thing like they call it homework practice which is optional like just to start your onboarding like a, a week or something before you actually begin so this is for the summer so like either may to august or june to august you decide when you want to start it's insane my mom is laughing at me she's like maria you didn't even need to do this when you got it. oh my goodness so after the Microsoft interviews were over, I thought I was done my recruiting season. I was like, yes, don't have to study anymore. And then Figma emailed me, which is a good thing, but they emailed me and they're like, oh, we'd like to invite you to do our on-site because then they just jumped from doing the online assessment to on-site interviews, which are also three 45 minute interviews. Ah, so much interviewing. So we did that. I made an entire video about this. So if you want to see everything that happened then watch that video because I wanted to give you all the details that I could. And what was very interesting was that the CEO of Figma watched it and left a comment, which is like, what? And a bunch of other people from Figma watched it. And then also the two co-founders of Byteboard, which is the coding assessment that Figma and like Lyft and a bunch of other companies use. Those two women watched it and I was like, what? So crazy and they even shared it. And I was like, oh my God, that's so sweet. Well, yeah, what happened was, yeah, I got rejected from Figma and my friend Liran wanted me to call my video Figma rejection speed run, but I didn't because then it would just be giving everything away. And another company I forgot to talk about was me interviewing at RBC. Like I applied to RBC like a million times through a bunch of hackathons that I went to and never heard anything back. And I applied like a few times on their website and then somehow, I don't know, I got emailed and they're like, oh, do you want to interview? And then I was like, sure. And they're like, here's a day and a time, be there. They didn't even ask me what time I wanted. And then I was just like, okay. And it was, I think it was like 45 minutes and it was, just me and then like the development manager and then a senior engineer on the team 
So yeah, they didn't tell me what the job was about. And then the, in the interviewer just tells me, oh yeah, this is for a site reliability engineering internship. Do you know what that is? And I was like, kind of, is it this? And he was like, no. <laughs> and then he explained it. After that, they asked me all of these questions related to things only site reliability engineers would know. Even though a minute ago, I said I didn't know that stuff, <laughs> which was hilarious. So yeah, they're like, oh, describe like, how would you create a CICD deployment environment, you know, like that type of thing. And, and they're like, well, we're, what are the main features that you need? And I tried like BSing this basically. And then the senior engineer kept acting like his tone when whenever the person would ask me a question it would just be like oh i don't believe you could do this you're too dumb like you put this on your resume yeah right and then i would explain it and they're like mm -hmm, yeah sure you did that and i was like what like why are you acting this way it was so dumb i'm like that's why like i didn't want to be in computer science because people kept acting like that in high school and then now i see it and i see it in rbc and i'm like okay i don't want to be working with those types of people because i haven't seen that at shopify and I see it here in my first interview, bad sign, like red flag. I just wanted to bring this up because it was just a bad experience. I'm not saying that RBC is a, like a bad company or everyone who works there is like that, but it just, in my opinion, it was not a great like interview at all. And it was just, when someone is like talking down at you or like talking, I don't know, it was just it made me feel horrible. And it's just like when you leave an interview and you feel shitty about yourself, that's like, that shouldn't be the case. And if you're talking to me and treating me like that, then like, I don't want to work with you. Also, something I thought I should probably do is show you my stats of like, what I applied to, how many, no you know, numbers basically. So yeah. And also I want to rank things. So the, like the best and the worst of both, you know, OAs and interviews. So I was thinking, okay, worst online assessment was definitely hands down JP Morgan and Chase. I didn't talk about this, but that OA was just like, like, why is this a thing? Because they gave me a question, like two questions, and then you have to code it and then do a like a two minute video response explaining your answer. The first question was like super easy. You can do it in one line. The second question was dynamic programming. I'm like, how does this show you anything about a candidate? Like why? Like I at least do like a normal level question and then like a slightly harder question. Why like from zero to a hundred? That didn't make any sense to me. I don't know if these are randomized, but that was just stupid. And also the best OA in my opinion was the Figma one where they used Byteboard, which was really fun. I just thought that it like was different and it wasn't just like testing your algorithm knowledge. It was like, oh, can you actually like understand code? Write out all these functions like based off of understanding a small code base. And also can you like read a technical document and like understand it? My worst interview experience, RBC probably. And then like maybe second worst is like some of the Microsoft ones were pretty like boring and just like, why am I doing this? Like this isn't even like, hard like it's not testing me like i want something that's difficult and like moves my brain you know best interviews i would say would be twitch because those are super fun and just like, i had such a great experience i really liked how it was like oh there's this feature in twitch how would you design it so i really like that they pulled me a lot like they asked me so many different things and i really just like it was just fun answering those questions it was just a challenge so i enjoyed that so what ended up happening in the end well, I did reject a few companies and get rejected, you know. I know you're probably thinking like, Maria, why did you do this? But it was an experiment, you know, I didn't think I would get this far. I didn't think I would actually have to like reject companies. Like who would think that would happen? But when I got the acceptance at Twitch, I was just like shocked because I didn't expect to get an offer from that, like from a company that I dreamed to work at. Like I really wanted to work at Twitch. I was trying to figure out how can I have this opportunity like it's a one in a million chance that i would get into twitch i don't know if this opportunity will ever come around again and then also i was thinking i've never had a normal internship experience like i've always done shopify dev degree which is not normal by any means like it's still it's pretty different i wanted to give this a chance i want to see can i actually do this so i stayed up late at night trying to write out basically an essay about all the reasons to the twitch recruiter that i can say that oh i can prove that i can do both dev degree and work at twitch full time like over the summer because in the contract it said this one part where it says you can't work at another company unless you get consent from twitch i was stayed up like late at night thinking about all this stuff and i like, could barely fall asleep and i kept messaging my brother and asking him for help and messaging my friend jerry and we were trying to think of like 300 iq moves that i can do and i was thinking about oh yeah 
what if I just take a bunch of vacation days because I have all these leftover vacation days at Shopify? Or what if I, I don't even know, just like so many different things. And yeah, so many things going through my head. And I'm like, I really, really, really want to work at Twitch because it's like my dream, dream opportunity. And I messaged a recruiter and I said, oh, can I talk to you tomorrow? And he's like, oh, I'm free today at 6 p.m. Well, let's talk. And then I was like, okay, like I wasn't prepared for this because I was like, oh no, I'm too nervous to talk. So then I call him and then I said, oh, I saw this thing in the contract. What does this mean? And he's like, oh, that's just for full-time employees just to make sure that they don't have an extra full-time job. It doesn't relate to interns because we know all these interns are always doing side hustles. And I was like, what? <laughs> what did you just say? And literally the conversation lasted like five minutes because I, I told him my situation and he's like yeah as long as you're doing your work at twitch we don't care hear no evil see no evil and i was like what my mind was blown everybody i told were just like what the f maria like how and because basically my plan for this summer is to be a double intern you know because how it works is that i work at shopify i have to work 20 hours on my team per week and five hours doing like learning and dev degree stuff like dev degree meetings so I'm gonna do four hours in the morning every day, like 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. And then since Twitch is, my team at Twitch is in Pacific Standard Time, that's three hours later. So they start 9.30 a.m. Pacific Time, which is 12.30 p.m. for me. So then I'll just start working at 12.30 p.m. and then just work until, I don't know, like 9.30 p.m. or like 9 p.m. or something like that. It was an interesting experience. I'm excited, also very scared, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. It's getting very long, sorry. But yeah, this was really fun crazy experience never thought this would happen in my life thanks for watching and i wish you good luck with all of your internship and job hunting experiences so if you like this video smash the thumbs up button comment your thoughts about my weird journey and subscribe and i'll see you next time bye